368-2404. That's 368-2404. Don't forget, they do vehicle wraps also. Phoenix Promotional Solutions, 368-2404. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! Six minutes after 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Nice looking Tuesday morning. I hope you're doing well. Got a good book to talk to you about. And today, we have a little bit more time than usual. Normally, when we speak to novelists, we have about an eight or ten minute uh, time frame. But we've got about 24 minutes to speak to Abigail Gibbs, which I'm looking forward to because the book sounds very fascinating. It has not arrived here yet. And she sounds fascinating. Uh... I don't know if she's in England, but it says here she's from England. And her first novel, The Dark Heroine, Dinner and with a Vampire, was discovered on uh, like a website, I guess, for, for um, beginning writers or something like that. Her new book is called Autumn Rose. So let's find out about this. So she not only is uh, on the air to talk about her book, which I want to make sure we do that, of course, but talk about her a little bit. It gives us a little chance. I, I kind of like when we can uh, kind of you know, spread our time out a little bit, right? With, yeah. some, with some good chatter, chat, whatever. <laughs> she's from England and says she studies English. You, yeah. I thought only Americans needed to study English. Yeah, I know, I, I know. Thought, I thought if you're born in England, you automatically don't need to study it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> if you're born in America, yeah. <laughs> Abigail Gibb, good morning, Abigail. Good morning. How <laughs> I are, do you need to study English, I'm afraid. Where are you? Where are you right now? I'm in Oxford, England. In Oxford, all right. So our voices are crossing the ocean. They are, they are, a long way. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? So what's it, what's it like in Oxford right now? How's the weather? Um, sunny, but it keeps raining. We keep having showers. It's a bit changeable. I just like the way you talk. You can just talk all day long. You can tell me anything you want to tell me. I'll just listen. Abigail, you were named one of the Wattpad Publishing's greatest success stories. So let's start out with that. What the heck is Wattpad? Um, well, Wattpad is an Wattpad. online site, which is a community for writers and readers, basically. And it's a user-generated site, which is a fancy term for saying that writers can upload their stories or poems, whatever they write, to the site and get feedback on them from fans who can comment, vote, message the author, fan them, all sorts. And um, I was discovered on there... Um, when I was 17, 16, 17, after uploading my first book, Dinner of the Vampire, serially, and it got 17 million reads over three years, and I was found by my agent and then by HarperCollins, my publisher, William Morrow, in the U.S. And, um, yeah, it launched my career. I got a massive book deal, and it's just been a whirlwind since. Wow. And how long ago was that? Um, that was... About 18 months ago now. Wow. So you have literally changed your life by writing. Yeah, completely. Just upside down. It's it's quite surreal. So you're very young, uh, am I right? You you still very, uh, what are you nineteen now? I'm nineteen. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So so, have you had any other job? Was this this is it? You you've stumbled into the thing you were gifted to do. Yeah, I got very lucky. I mean, I had a, a Saturday job growing up. Um, because my parents are very much into the, you know, you should learn how to work and work right, hard and everything. Right. Cause I'm currently studying for a degree. Um, so, yeah, no, I don't really have real life. I just have, like, my dream job. Uh, so, read books for my degree. Well, also. no, don't complain about that. What, what was your Saturday job? Um, I was a cleaner, actually, in hospitality, because I'm a bit of a methodical person, so I like I like cleaning and tidiness, so it was the perfect Saturday job. Oh, wow, wow, well, you're, you're sound, you sound very sweet. Now, the book sounds like it's dark, though, uh, so how'd that happen? You, you've got a sweet personality and a dark, <laughs> and, a, and you've got some darkness about your, yeah. your, your talent, I guess, huh? Um, yeah, people are always surprised when, when I say, oh, I write about vampires and blood and dying and death and fate and things. Um, I, I don't really know. I, growing up, read a lot of fantasy and paranormal books, which just 
tend to be dark because of their, their subject matter. Right. Um, and I think that probably influenced me quite a lot. But the, the dark hair in books were a response really to Twilight, the Twilight saga, um, which is quite dark. But I always felt, especially with the vampires, was quite tame in comparison to something like, say, Dracula. And I just wanted to kind of create something that was a bit bloodier and a bit more um, kind of horror themed than, than the Twilight Saga. So oh, really? A, really? A reaction to that, really. So let me ask you this, because you're a student of English. Why is the word parachute beginning with P-A-R-A, and so it is paranormal. What's, the, what's, the, what's similar to a parachute and paranormal? What does that mean? What is oh, my God. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> what, the para, what does para mean? Does it mean... I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's Paralympics, Never. Too, so I don't know what that is. <laughs> but I don't know. All right, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to throw you a big curveball there. Uh, one of the things that you, your book is about, though, is about um, uh, bullying because if because your character is different than the rest and she's shunned. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that came out of attending school really um whilst i was well not quite whilst i was writing it but i was writing it shortly after leaving school so i think there were still fresh memories of seeing um the bullying going on fortunately i never really experienced it myself but you know a lot of friends did and there's always some form of teasing that turns nasty at school so yeah there's uh, there's a lot of school age teenage issues which were quite um important to me uh going on in the book oh really like what what kind of um, issues Who, who's the main who's the uh what do you call it protagonist who's the protagonist well that's autumn rose autumn okay oh, autumn rose title. okay yeah and she and she's how old she's well 15 turning 16 in the book okay and and so are your readers that same age yeah, they're about uh, 15, 16 up. It's classed as young adult, but it's it's more for the the just becoming an adult age group. Okay, okay. And so a lot of the readers can relate to the problem. I'm looking at your photograph. You're very pretty, so no wonder you weren't bullied. See, the pretty girls don't get bullied, <laughs> or am I wrong about that? No, I think you're wrong. I'm wrong? I think, yeah. I think sometimes pretty girls get bullied. You get bullied? You, but you didn't get bullied, right? No, well, I... Um, I sort of sorted that out when I was about 13. Um, I did judo for about nine years. You did I judo? To a black belt. <laughs> I did. Huh. Yeah, and a, a bully um, tried to sort of bully me and a friend, and I basically just turned around and, and told him that and was judo, and, and word got around. And everybody <laughs> said, oh, don't pick with that Abigail Gibb. She's, she's the right one. Oh, <laughs> that's I terrible. Happen. That's great. So do you have a, uh, can I be personal with a question? Yeah, go for it. Do you have a boyfriend? I do, yes. And how does he like your judo? Does he like that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I gave it up ages ago, so I'm not even sure Shh. I could like, do anything. Don't tell anybody that. Keep, you got to keep that a secret. All right. Uh, well, congratulations on all your success, and it's fun getting to know you. Like uh, as I mentioned in the introduction, a lot of times when Robin and I speak to novelists, um, it's it's kind of hard to speak about a novel at length because you don't want to give away too much. You know, yeah. one, one of the things that I noticed on some of the book review sites is that when the average person writes a review, the the whoever manages oversees the website will often hide the review with a, a disclaimer saying, warning, if you click on this one, you're going to, it's a spoiler. It's going to spoil mm. the story. Yeah. So you don't want that either, right? No, no. I, I like those because when I'm looking at books, I, I hate knowing what's going to happen. So, yeah, I'm a fan of that. <laughs> yeah, so, so you got you to make sure the sites are doing that. So did you put this one up on, what was it called again? What, uh, Wattpad. Wattpad. Did you put this book on Wattpad? Um, not in its entirety. So I, once it was written, I published the first 
10 chapters or so about Round Men up on Wattpad just to give all the fans a kind of taste of it in the months leading up to the publication because everybody's just like, oh, it's taking so long and everything. So I gave them a little sample, a little uh, teaser, really. <laughs> um, but no, I didn't put it up on Wattpad in its entirety. So it was a very different writing experience. It's uh, really amazing how you're able to take a subject of paranormal that people are really enticed by because uh, that's like since the beginning of time, people are really interested and fascinated by this. Did you do a lot of research into keeping things true to form as to what people believe when you wrote? Um, some, somewhat, um, but I mainly tend to just go out on a sort of limb and do my own thing. Um, so for the, the first book, more than the second book, I did quite a lot of research about vampires and the folklore surrounding them, which which did feed into um, the second book, a lot of the things to do with like Romania and, and things like that. Um, but for the second book, not so much, because the sage are quite organic. They just sort of appeared in my head mm-hmm. um, with, I suppose, their only real influence is sort of witches um, in some books that I've read, but not particularly. So the only real research I did was um, into Latin, because there's a a language, made-up language in the book, which is based largely on Latin, which obviously as an English student, that that quite appealed to me, looking at the etymology of all the words. Yeah, right, Um, right, right. That's about all I did, really. (laughs) I uh, love the fact that in your uh, bio that you write that your greatest fear is blood, thus you're a great advocate of vegetarianism. Yeah, I I'm, I'm, I really am terrified of blood. Sort of the the fainting, passing out, can't look at blood, hates paper cuts type of phobia. Um, so I don't really know why I wrote a book about vampires or <laughs> then a sequel, which is also <laughs> very bloody. So let me, can I go back to the definition of the word paranormal? And, and okay. I'm not trying to throw you another. I'm not trying to throw you another curveball. I, I'm just. When I hear paranormal, I always think of psychics and and and, say, and seers. You know, people. No, I don't mean the store. I mean uh, people who can see the future, right? But it, but it also applies to vampires. I don't understand why. Good question. Yeah, it's. I think it's an interesting evolution that vampires have sort of come to be included in the paranormal um, because that was often, I think exclusive to sort of ghosts and and psychics and things like that um but recently yeah vampires werewolves as that uh, genre, as those genres have taken off have kind of been included in it i'm not really sure why i think it's come to be a term that just generally encompasses the concept of uh mythical or unreal or impossible um so okay okay now it makes sense broad Term, I think, in, in literature. Well, well, because the paranormal psychic, the psychic part of paranormal, uh, and I'm not psychic. I'm not trying to say this, but I've had dreams, for example, that and I've, I guess we've all had this, where you wake up and you say, "Oh, I hope that one doesn't come true. That was such a bad dream, right?" Mm-hmm. Or, or you have a dream where it's like you won the lottery. So, oh, hope that one comes true, <laughs> right? <laughs> But 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 and so you have lots of them. But every once in a while, you have a dream, and something similar will happen. Maybe it's neither good nor bad. It's just it's just there. And you say, "Wow, did I somehow know this in advance or something?" And that's that's almost like where with vampires, it's probably not going to happen. Or am I wrong about that? No, I'm pretty sure vampires are not going to be turning up. Any <laughs> I just want your assurance. I'm, I'm almost 60, but I need the assurance of a 19-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when you do the scenarios in the book to have the different personalities, uh, you also have a uh, another character in addition to Autumn Rose named uh, uh, Violet Lee. Yes. So is she, uh, what kind of character is she? Well, she's um, actually the main character from the first book, and she's um, a human at the start. And um, she's very, very different to Autumn Rose. She's also quite young. She's 18 um, and feisty, and she sort of stumbles upon 
this mythical world that she has no idea about. She's completely ignorant of it and um, falls into the hands of vampires, essentially, and her stories about her finding her destiny and also finding about, out about this entire world she had no idea about, of which Autumn Rose is part. And so, yeah, she's a very different character, very much more kind of ignorant and confused than Autumn. Um, but it's about her transformation um, into a someone who knows about this world and also sort of out of humanity not to give a plot point away right so yeah she's very very different from autumn wow wow you know we were watching um some interviews with uh, woody allen recently and woody allen has come to be known as a guy who a man writer who can write women characters and women feel like he does a good job representing the women the woman's experience mm-hmm uh, I've, I, and I, I found that a little interesting because I, I never, it never occurred to me that a man wouldn't normally be able to write a, wom- a female character that would be a pr- uh, get the stamp of approval from women. You know what I mean? Right. But the opposite never seems to be the case. You never hear of a woman who can't write the man's experience. So it's almost like women understand both sexes, but men really only understand men. Oh, <laughs> <That's a key laughs> unless, unless your name is Woody Allen. I don't know. <laughs> But, but and and the, and the other the other comparison I wanted to make uh, Abigail is the fact that uh, in his movie that we were just talking about the other day, J- J- Blue Jasmine, Blue Jasmine, his characters are spices, mm-hmm. like jasmine and and uh, chili, chili and ginger. Yes. And, and your characters are flowers. Oh, keen observation. Yeah. <laughs> are there are there more are there well, m- more than violet and rose? Um. There were a few others, yeah. I didn't actually notice this until a few months ago when, when the press tour started for Autumn Rose and somebody pointed out in an interview, your characters are all named after plants. <laughs> and I was like, oh. Oh, you didn't notice it? <laughs> um, so, you know, it was quite unconscious at first, but th- there are other characters. There's a lily. There is a thyme. Oh, um, wow. Well, there were other ones, but it was quite funny. It, it got to Valentine's Day, um, obviously, a couple of weeks ago, and I felt the need to tweet. And, you know, the uh, roses are red, violets are blue, et cetera, poem. Uh-huh. I felt the need to be like, roses are sage, violets are vamp, time is a plant. And, like, time is a girl, and I love plants. And everybody was just like, what the hell are you on about? Like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> All my characters are flowers. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, no. That's kind of funny. Uh, It seems um, because you had reference that uh, Autumn had a grandmother. Uh, It seems like you're uh, very much uh, into family and the support of family. Are they supportive of you with your writings? Definitely, definitely, yeah. I mean, my parents are just fantastic, um, and they're so proud as well, but they're just supporting me. They're great because I'm at uni, I'm studying, and I'm also trying to write books, do publicity and everything, and try and preserve a social life and have a boyfriend. It's a lot to do, and so they're always there helping me out, like, you know, getting me to and from uni, but also answering emails and things for me and just generally being fantastic. And I'm very close to my grandmother as well on my maternal side. And she, I think, is probably, if writing is a talent or a gift, I think that's where I get it from because she's a massive uh, reader herself and also writes and kind of gave me my love for words as a, a young girl when she was sort of babysitting me. So, yeah, I, I love my family to bits. <laughs> so you mentioned earlier, Abigail, you mentioned that you had a job on Saturdays cleaning. And after you answered that question, you said you are... A, 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 a regimented, organized, you, you like things in order, right? Right, yeah. Okay, okay. so does that, <laughs> apply, does that apply to how you discipline the time so that you have time for writing? Because writing obviously consumes a large part of your time. So do you discipline it in the same way as you would have, let's say, cleaned a, a hotel or whatever it is you were cleaning? It's probably all the same thing. This, I'm quite an organized person, and I like to uh, compartmentalize different aspects of my life and, and get stuff done. So, yeah, I mean, with the writing and the degree, in term time, I have very short terms, just eight weeks, three times a year. So I, during that time, I just focus on my degree, 
whereas in the vacation holiday periods, I do all the writing and, and as much as I can oh, with that. Okay, so, okay. Yeah, that's kind of... And I suppose, like, going back to the Saturday job and things, I would, you know, do school all week and work on that, and then at weekends I'd do my job. Um, and that was kind of how I always kept everything very separate, because um, that's how just how I like to organize my life, really. And that's pretty inspirational of you to others, because there are people out there that think that they should things have handed to them and not work for it, not develop um, their own personal personality and their own credibility in the world but you're really uh inspiring people not to do that just to be the best they can be and sure it's it's, it's going to take a, a little work but in the end it's a very very rewarding definitely yeah i mean I, I don't come from any kind of privileged background i never had things handed to me um unfortunately <laughs> but yeah i had to um <laughs> I did have to work hard and, and sometimes it can seem unfair or especially when you hit up against obstacles and barriers it feels like you're going nowhere and and um yeah it you just have to keep going and either go over the obstacle or around the obstacle and, and keep your eyes fixed on on your dreams cliche as that sounds um until you reach them really and it's yeah, I'm I'm very much a proponent of, of hard work, especially if you kind of enjoy the work itself. So if you're kind of like me and you love the writing, it shouldn't feel like work, hopefully. So, wow, yeah, wow. Um, a yeah. Abigail Gibbs is impressing us. She's in England. She's 19 years old, and she's got a couple of hit books on her hands. One is called Autumn Rose. The Dark Heroine, a paranormal romance novel, and uh, we're just all very excited for your success. I'm going to ask you to be a psychic just for a moment. Can you uh, predict where you'll be in 10 years? What will you be doing in 10 years? Oh gosh, it's like a job interview. Um, <laughs> <laughs> More fun, there's no... And earning uh, like a, a billion dollar salary or something. No, um, I, I hope that I'll be writing still and making a career out of it. Um, writing is my life, and even if I don't make money out of it, even if I'm not with this fantastic huge publisher like HarperCollins, it's something I do just to relax and it's something that makes me happy. So I want to still be writing, hopefully earning from it, and I'll probably go back to grad school and continue filling my life up completely with stuff. Well, I didn't know, I, I didn't know if maybe you would, you would foresee here in Florida, maybe Universal Studios, maybe there's a whole new land, you know, called uh, the Autumn Rose Land or the, or the Abigail Gibbs. You know, like we have a whole K, J.K. Rowling land for, for yeah. Harry Potter. Right, right. We got this whole thing here in Florida that <laughs> celebrates her writing. So we might have this whole thing celebrating your writing. We might have rides. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I hate roller coasters, so I kind of hope not. Okay, so yours will be a gentle ride. A gentle yeah. ride through the bloody gentle bath ride. of a vampire. <laughs> Yeah. That's right. Yeah, exactly that, yeah. Uh, oh, that's too funny. You know, uh, speaking of Universal Studios, some years ago, Robin and I, were, uh, we, did, we did some work at a, at a resort outside of Universal Studios. And it was, at the time, there was, it was a lot of people there from Scotland. Remember that, Robin? Yes, I do. And by the Charming. way, I can understand your accent. I can't understand Scotland. I have no idea what yeah. they're saying. <laughs> But <laughs> yours is charming. But they, yeah, they were really sweet. But they would, they would came by and they said, "Is there any place that you can get a cup of tea?" Yeah. Everybody sells coffee around here. That's and right. I said, "You know, I don't know. I never heard that complaint before." <laughs> and so I noticed that you enjoy coffee. So are you, are you unusual yeah. in on England for for the coffee instead of the tea? Um, I wouldn't say I'm unusual for drinking it. I'm unusual for disliking with a passion. I hate it. I can't drink it. Um, whereas most people I know sort of switch between sort of tea and, and coffee as needed on the, the caffeine scale. But no, I, I am completely a coffee addict. <laughs> I, I need it in my life. Well, you would you would you, you would f you would fit in here because we all are. Yeah. Uh, we're all kind of addicted to coffee. <laughs> Well, 92% of us. That's right. Uh, Abigail, you are a joy, and, and we're very impressed with what you've done. And, and uh, the interview was just fabulous, simply because we were able to speak about more than just the book. But the book was the, the focal point. It's called Autumn Rose. Abigail Gibbs is who you will look up. Abigail, do you have a website we can go to? Um, yeah, it's abigailgibbsbooks.co.uk. 
Okay, abigailgibbsbooks.co.uk. Got it? Did we get it right? Abby, we didn't lose you, did we? Okay. Well, Abby, what time is it in England? <laughs> it is, oh, I'm not even sure, uh, half past three in the afternoon. Half past three. All right. All right. Wow. Well, uh, you've Tea been, time. You've been, <laughs> no, coffee time. <laughs> it, coffee. It's time for a coffee break, <laughs> Abigail. Uh, you it is. It if, is. If you're ever in Florida, uh, have you ever been here, by the way? I've never been to the States, no. Oh. No, I want to, though. Oh, that'll... Maybe when your snow is all gone, though. The polar vortex is gone. <laughs> <laughs> the polar vortex. Uh, Abigail, we, yeah, we're not affected by that at all. It's beautiful here right now. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Florida, then. <laughs> it, is, yeah, it is Florida. C- come and visit us sometime, and you're definitely welcome back on the show anytime, whether you're in the studio or on the phone. Thank you very much. Fun interview. Uh, Abigail Gibbs, get the book. It's called Autumn Rose. We'll take a little break and be right back. Whether it's a car accident, storm damage, or a fire, when the unthinkable happens, it doesn't matter if you've saved money in 15 minutes. In this moment, it doesn't matter if your neighbor has the same insurance as you do. In this moment, what matters is that your independent insurance agent and the company that stands behind them have you covered. Auto Owners Insurance, the no problem people. Call George Mangan Insurance in Ocala today at 352-732-3191. The difference at Ocala Eye is evident in everything we do for you. To learn more about the many ways we look out for you, we're holding an open... 